lot of our endangered species live in Black Mountain, Kalkajaga, tabletop in the river system. And the species that we have here are boulder's frog that lives in Black Mountain, Yirugu Yirugu we call that one. And along the river, there's a frog that is black and brown that lives only on the wetlands of the river. So we have different species of frogs. And we have special geckos that live here also. And, um, and also we have here the tree bennets climbing kangaroo. In our Google we call him Jarabina. Jarabina is only seen when our people go and call out in our language. Yundu Wanjabo, Yundu Wanjabo. Means that, where are you? Where are you? Kare Milbijika. Come out and show yourself. Yundu Ninyajinga. They want to see you. So, we communicate with that animal and those spiritual animals. And that's why importance to have welcome on country must go through that smoking ceremony because our spirit connects with those spiritual beings and those special animals that lives in those special areas. Ayura, good day. Uh, we are now on a swamp in the Yambaguchino country, which is a sub-clan of Angamuti clan group, and we're looking for the sacred turtle. So this is our trap here. Uh, this is our second one um, for this site. So we've got two on this site. So if you want to grab it. Oh, we've got some. Excellent. By coming out here to see the work that, that, that they've done on the turtle is very important to my people, the Angamuthi clan especially, because it's part of our totem. Our totem is the freshwater turtle. And um, just being here around it and make, making sure that everything's done properly for the turtle in the managing, the looking after, and um, yeah, just seeing how from the science, scientists, uh, scientific, how they do it, with the management and uh, to learn more about uh, if there's other ways to manage the turtle. This is the painted turtle we've been looking for and we are here just bringing it out of the trap and as you can see they got a red chest and this one's here um, a male. You can see that his tail is pretty long. See? And um, this one here yeah, um, is a female got short tail. This waterhole, as far as we know, at this stage in Australia is the most important spot for them. So it's a very unique, unique waterhole. So if our dry seasons are longer and more intense, there may be less, less water in these important waterholes. They are found in, in New Guinea, very, uh, very similar ones found in New Guinea, but there they're very heavily hunted. So this, this waterhole where they're not hunted at all uh, and have, has a high population is probably quite important for them. We're going to try and satellite a green turtle and a hawksbill. And so that'll be our first one in our um, water. Um, yeah, um, so we'll be all day up and we'll be catching a lot today, <laughs> yeah. Go on, keep him in! We're down here doing the, the turtle service. We catch about you know, up to 10 to 15 turtles a day. Uh, we process them, we take their, uh, take their measurements, uh, you sort of estimate their weight, you know, male, female as well, um, and uh, tag them. We've got a sequence of tags that we actually get out and put into their flippers uh, just to see if 
the turtles in this area are um, actually live around here and forage around here and nest here or they just forage here and maybe go up to Rain Island or elsewhere to nest. Uh, maybe even down towards uh, Cape Melville, the Bathurst Heads. Ready? Bye bye buddy. See you. We are uh, going out and doing turtle monitoring and, and tagging and we caught this one here yesterday in our country just out here outside of Running Creek. Um, it's, it's very sick, uh, we found in the shallows. Uh, we've, we've got hold of Yuko Budja from Cooktown, the turtle rescue mob, and they're coming up today to, um, to help uh, take it back to rehab. Peter? Got an infection through there, it's actually gone right through the shell. Um, there, there's little worms and stuff that crawl around through there, over there and, and here as well, and through the back there. And off she's gone, gone to hospital. Get all better again. Be back in a couple of months. Well, when she did when she did first turn up, she was very weak. Um, but now I do believe she has put on a fair, fair bit of weight. Um, but as you can see, it's a very old turtle, and yeah. So we just got to make sure that it, it'll survive once it goes back into the wild, and which I do believe would what would happen. And um, yeah, we sort of making sure that we can look after these animals. Uh, we committed to it. And um, I think we are the only rehabilitation hospital, turtle hospital in pretty much um, the north. So yeah, we try to look after them. Here today we're doing a necropsy on a turtle, um, just finding out what it's died from, um, if it has any diseases or anything like that. Just make sure everything's healthy. Um, you're just trying to keep on top of everything, so if anything does come out and about, we, we can get onto it straight away. This is the training here now, so um, we, we can do this on country instead of sending it down to Jenny, which Jenny is located in Cairns on Fitzroy Island, rehab center down there. So save us sending all our turtles down there every time and waiting for a week results or something, we can actually do it on country and um, yeah, get the results ourselves and send it down to Jenny and we'll go from there. Yeah, Jenny, I've opened up a turtle and guts and I find a all the shell inside the Yeah, Teddy, that's right. It's actually was, um, there was a lot of shell that you found in there. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that turtle actually died of that shell. It was so sharp. You know how when you opened up, you felt it, it was really yeah, yeah. sharp. So what's happened is it's perforated its actual large intestine. Was it starving? And did it eat the shell because it was starving? Or did it eat the shell? And it caused an impaction and that caused it to starve. That's what we don't know. So Jenny, is this an environmental impact? It is, because what's happening is that we're getting enormous runoff that's happening in the sea and it's covering their feeding grounds. So not only green sea turtles are losing their seagrass from being covered, also hawksbill turtles, which we don't normally see, are actually coming in suffering from starvation and impactions because this runoff and the silt is covering the sponges, which is what hawksbills eat, and the little coral beds and that. So it really is impacting on two species at the moment, which is a problem. This is our ranger camp here, our turtle camp for this year. We've, we've camped here for about two years now. Um, as you can see, this is our kitchen here. This we do. We do all our cooking. It's here, and some of the all the computers and all the electronic stuff we get charged. All the eye trackers and yeah, and the computer. We sleep there at night under the big tarp. We do have teams that we swapped out, and yeah, four boys each. Tonight we're going to be putting in some indicators. 
hit a nest, but taking, taking the turtle to gonna have a look and see where, what's the turtle doing. If it's starting to lay, we're gonna put the monitor nest in the, the indicator nest in there on the turtle nest, so we can keep on track of the nest and the hatchling. Literally, all of her feeding is to produce eggs. So if she's feeding in a good area, she's gonna produce lots of big eggs and you know lots of them, but if we find that they start feeding in areas where they're running out of food or things aren't right, then we'll see that in the eggs. They'll get smaller, lighter, and she'll produce less of them. Um, this is the tool we use to measure the egg. And we use this little scale here sit them on top and it'll take all the weight and the reading. When you have good feeding, you get good eggs and you get more eggs and more turtle. And yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why we do all this work. Crab Island, which is the the known as the largest um, breeding grounds for flatbacks is um, slightly going underwater. Likewise with Rain Island down on the east coast with the green turtles going underwater. So um, yeah, it's definitely impacting on um, sea turtles, the ones in northern Australia anyway. All these nests along here, about eight or nine nests, they've all been damaged by only I think one boar. And yeah, that's the only one that, because you only can see one track. As you can see, the same pig was here last night again. And the guana come behind him. I don't think, I don't think so, they left, leave any eggs. We're gonna get this pig. So we do uh, feral animal control, shooting pigs, especially along the coast. They, the main ones that attract to the uh, tail legs. Yeah, we have to shoot them. Like again, it's part of our job, and they're feral. And they're the one that the most damage, like again, to tail legs and lagoons, swamps. This is a baby flatback here. And this is when they're at their most vulnerable stage, when they first leave the nest. Um, on the island here there's a lot of night herons, uh, pelicans, jabaroos, um, terns and also the, the big threat it seems at the moment is the crocodiles. They're, um, they're actually going up and getting these fellas as they're leaving the nest. So I reckon like maybe we should do something about the crocs. Maybe some kind of management or yeah, because there's a there's a, there's hips on the island here. Maybe over a hundred. A lot of the little crocs, uh, most of them come up and get all the hatchlings. Well, the bigger crocs they wait for the mother turtle. Uh, That crocodile too. When we'll try and get it, like if QPWS can you know, maybe set up a plan with us, sit down, come and talk to us. 
we want to be able to manage the crocodiles. You know, it's dangerous. I know you go up these two rivers, the Munkan and the Japanese, see hippo crocs now. Where the two rivers are and there's got fresh water billabongs, they roll up in there too, not far from the rivers, you know, and some of them place where swimming water also for them kids, but can't swim anymore, no? There are a lot of threats to animals in Cape York. We are also seeing the threats to our animals from bad fire management and also bad water quality. We used to have a lot of gutteria, you know, kangaroo. We'd get a few, like, we had climbing kangaroos along here too. Yeah, but there's nothing there. No kangaroo. No, hardly any kangaroo. We've only got a few left. Not like before, it used to be heaps. Like the rivers, you know, like there's too much. Before we used to go fishing spots that we can get abundance of fish or we go to a certain place, there's certain bushtaka there. But you, you see hardly that anymore now. And I think that um, one other thing is, and, and that's why I'm saying, it, it, it's given a message to a big, I don't know whether it's the Australian government or United Nations mob to say that, you know, climate change is a factor here. It is really important for people to realise that we have a vital role in playing our part in managing our country to ensure our animal species are alive and well and are here for the future.